This is a Fox News Alert. I'm Brett Baer in Washington. Two major stories tonight. The Obamacare architect who said the program was a deception and you are stupid was on Capitol Hill today to face a grilling from members of both parties. And the release of a highly controversial and inflammatory report on CIA interrogation techniques following the 9-11 attacks. First up, the CIA report. We have Fox team coverage. Ed Henry's at the White House with the politics behind the findings. But we begin here in studio with Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Harridge and a document that takes no prisoners in its condemnation of CIA methods. Okay. Well, thank you, Brett. On the Senate floor today, Democratic Chairwoman Dianne Feinstein said the program shut down six years ago is a stain on America's values. History will judge us by our commitment to a just society governed by law and the willingness to face an ugly truth and say never again. The 6,700-page report costing more than $40 million was driven by Democrats on the Intelligence Committee who lose control of the Senate in January. The report reaches four key findings, that the enhanced interrogation program was not an effective way to gather intelligence. The CIA provided inaccurate information to policymakers and the public. The program was grossly mismanaged, and it was more brutal than previously known. One example, the waterboarding of al-Qaeda operative Abu Zubaydah. The CIA says Zubaydah helped them capture other high-value terror suspects, including Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the architect of the 9-11 attacks. But the report says the interrogation was so extreme, Zubaydah lost consciousness and was nearly blinded. And it concludes extreme tactics do not elicit credible information. Republican Senator John McCain, a former prisoner of war, supported that. I know from personal experience that the abuse of prisoners will produce more bad than good intelligence. But the CIA insists detainees, including Amar al baluchi the nephew of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, provided unique intelligence that disrupted plots, led to other arrests, and ultimately identified bin Laden's courier al-Kuwaiti and the terror leader's hideout in Pakistan. Enhanced interrogation contributed to the wealth of knowledge that we needed to have in order to find Abu Ahmed al-Kuwaiti, his true identity, and that led us to Abbottabad. The Senate report alleges the CIA kept President Bush in the dark about specific interrogation practices until 2006, four years after the program started. It cites an email about concerns that then Secretary of State Colin Powell would, quote, blow his stack if he were to be briefed on what's been going on. While the CIA Director John Brennan admitted to some mistakes, he denied the agency intentionally misled Congress, the executive branch, and others, quote, the process undertaken by the committee when investigating the program provided an incomplete and selective picture of what occurred. No CIA witnesses were interviewed because the Justice Department, under Attorney General Eric Holder, would not coordinate with the Senate committee, citing its own criminal investigation, which never resulted in any charges. Feinstein said even without the interviews, the paper trail is damning. These documents are important because they aren't based on recollection. They aren't based on revision. And they aren't a rationalization a decade later. Feinstein said a small group between 40 to 50 CIA personnel, including contractors, were responsible for the program, adding the report was never meant to be an indictment of the entire agency. Committee Republicans in their minority report said the Democrats were attempting to rewrite history because the CIA program saved lives, Brett. Okay, Catherine, thank you. You're welcome. Congressional Republicans and members of the Obama administration are both warning of a backlash overseas to this report. But President Obama and his team insist it is critical to turn the page. Here's Chief White House Correspondent Ed Henry. President Obama today continued his contradictory response to the Senate report, releasing a long written statement that admitted former President Bush had some agonizing choices after 9-11 and hailed intelligence officials as patriots, while Mr. Obama and Vice President Biden went on to slam the tactics used by those same patriots as being contrary to American values. We made a mistake. We made a big mistake. And while outgoing Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel said in Baghdad today the administration is bracing for possible violence against American interests, just days after Secretary of State John Kerry phoned Democrat Dianne Feinstein to express similar concerns about the timing. I have ordered um, all of our combatant commanders uh, to be on high alert everywhere in the world. Other top officials today were hailing the report's release as a victory for transparency. I think it's a badge of honor. Every country 
every country has engaged in activities somewhere along the line that it has not been proud of. But think about it. Name me another country that's prepared to stand up and say, this was a mistake. Biden's predecessor, former Vice President Dick Cheney, lashed out at the second guessing, telling the New York Times the Senate report is a crock and a bunch of hooey. Cheney insisting the program had been authorized and adding of intelligence officials, quote, they deserve a lot of praise. As far as I'm concerned, they ought to be decorated, not criticized. Adding to the split within the Obama administration, current CIA Director John Brennan agreed with Cheney. Brennan declaring in a statement that the enhanced techniques, quote, did produce intelligence that to help thwart attack plans, capture terrorists, and save lives. A parade of top Democrats sharply disagreed with the president's own CIA chief, citing horror stories from the report, like a CIA detainee dying from hypothermia after being held nude and chained for days. Not only is torture wrong, but it doesn't work. And for people to say, we hear them coming from different places, saying it was great, it was terrific what we did, it got us so much, got us nothing except a bad name. There had already been reports the administration was so torn up over this that Brennan, Brennan threatened to resign over what was being declassified. The White House tried to downplay all that today by saying the president has full confidence in his CIA director and he's sticking around. Brett? Ed Henry live on the North Lawn. Ed, thank you. Much more on this with the panel. Tomorrow, make sure you tune in as we will get reaction to this report live from former Vice President Dick Cheney. It will be his first interview since this report's release. It's an exclusive right here in studio tomorrow night on Special Report. Now to our other big story here in Washington tonight. The MIT PhD who called you stupid for accepting the president's health care law was taken to the Capitol Hill woodshed today. Chief Congressional Correspondent Mike Emanuel with a very unpleasant time for Jonathan Gruber. That was not the architect of President Obama's health care plan. MIT economist Jonathan Gruber said he was sorry for controversial statements, what he called inexcusable arrogance. I'd like to begin by apologizing sincerely for the offending comments that I've made. In some cases, I made uninformed and glib comments about the political process behind health care reform. I'm not an expert on politics and my tone implied I was, which is wrong. Gruber made headlines recently when videos surfaced showing him telling groups that the stupidity of the American voter and a lack of transparency were important to passing Obamacare. Are you stupid? I don't think so, no. Does MIT employ stupid people? Not to my knowledge. Okay, so you're a smart man who said some, as the ranking member said, some really stupid things, and you said the same, is that correct? I, the comments I made were really inexcusable. Just last week, former Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius said many folks don't get it. The financial literacy of a lot of people, particularly people who did not have insurance coverage or whose employers choose their coverage and kind of present it to them, is very low. And that has been a sort of stunning revelation. South Carolina Republican Trey Gowdy dug deeper with Gruber. You didn't remember calling your fellow citizens stupid, and, and you didn't remember saying that you're the only person who cares about the uninsured, that the rest of your fellow citizens don't give a damn about the uninsured. You don't remember saying that? I don't, because they were really glib and thoughtless comments that I made. And the oversight panel's top Democrat piled on, saying his comments were also damaging. I was very frustrated uh, when uh, with your statements. And I got to tell you, they were insulting. Um, they were especially harmful because they gave the opponents of the ACA a PR gift. Republicans demanded to know how much Gruber benefited financially as an Obamacare consultant. We want to know how much he got from the taxpayer and then made fun of him after he got the money and lied to him. I don't recall the total. Another Republican suggested the panel should issue a subpoena to get that dollar amount. And Utah Republican Jason Chaffetz requested Gruber's Obamacare communication. Once again, the committee can take that up with my counsel. Obama administration officials did not want Gruber sitting next to Medicare Administrator Marilyn Tavener, but that request was denied. Tavener faced some questions about why she had previously testified 7.3 million people had signed up for Obamacare on federal and state exchanges, some 400,000 higher than reality. Simply put, this was a mistake. Some individuals with both medical and dental coverage were counted twice 
in the individual affected enrollment numbers. With Gruber not wanting to talk about the money he's made, key lawmakers sound prepared to call him to testify again, especially since the health care law is not likely to go anywhere as long as President Obama is in office. Brett? Mike Emanuel, live on the Hill. Mike, thank you. We'll talk about this with the panel as well. Do you think Gruber's apology is sincere or he's just sorry he got caught? Let me know at Facebook.com slash Brett Baer SR or on Twitter at Brett Baer. You can use the hashtag special report. Up next, Secretary of State John Kerry defends the Obama administration's new war on ISIS terrorists. First, here's what some of our Fox affiliates around the country are covering tonight. Fox 46 in Charlotte, North Carolina, where Panthers quarterback Cam Newton was involved in a two-car accident near the team's stadium. Panthers say Newton suffered fractures to his lower back but will not need surgery. He'll spend the night in the hospital. Fox 5 in New York, where police fatally shot a man who had stabbed a student in the head inside a Brooklyn synagogue. Police confronted the assailant, who was shot after lunging at officers. The man's family says he had a history of bipolar disorder. And this is a live look at San Francisco from our Fox affiliate, KTVU, the Golden Gate Bridge there. The big story, nearly 160 people arrested during a third consecutive night of demonstrations against grand jury decisions not to indict white police officers in the deaths of African-American men in Missouri and New York. Police say the protest involved as many as 1,500 people who blocked traffic on both sides of Interstate 80. That's tonight's live look outside the Beltway from Special Report. We'll be right back.